The U.S. Navy is now racing to the rescue in Japan, where there is word that electricity is about to return to the Fukushima nuclear plant, and the U.S. is flying in five giant pumps from a Navy base in Nagasaki. They are pumps that can deliver enormous amounts of water after we all watch today those helicopters trying to spray water, but to no avail. Our reporters are out in force on this story tonight, and we will go to Japan in a moment. But first, let's head to Martha Raddatz, who has been talking all day to the U.S. officials who are now helping the Japanese. Martha. Diane, every day this nuclear monster seems to get more frightening, but there is some hope tonight from that big U.S. push to send in water pumps. This coming after last-ditch ditch efforts by the Japanese failed. One expert told us it's like using a squirt gun to put out a forest fire. Japanese fire trucks using riot control water hoses to tackle red hot nuclear reactors. Helicopters swooping overhead, dropping bucket after bucket. Every effort falling short. But here is the encouraging news. Japanese plant operators have connected a new electric power line to the plant. This entire crisis began when the power was knocked out. If the Japanese flip the switch, but those critical water pumps to cool the reactors don't work, then it's American pumps to the rescue. The Pentagon has shipped high-pressure pumps, but no U.S. personnel. Once again, the Japanese will have workers willing to risk their lives operating them. Today, for the first time, a close-up look at how dire things are. You can see Reactor 3, charred and billowing steam. But look right there, Reactor 4. You can see a green structure. Now look at this old photo taken inside. The same green structure above the critical fuel rod pool. Now the walls are blown out. One U.S. official telling us tonight this is close to a crisis situation. The water in the pool is desperately low, if there is any left at all. Without water, the rods will ignite and fill the sky with radioactive smoke. And at Reactor 3, the fuel stored in its pool is likely on the verge of melting, including plutonium, which if it melts down could produce a highly dangerous toxic plume. Also, its critical five-foot-thick concrete containment vessel is likely cracked. If the core melts down, it will pool up at the bottom of that vessel and could seep out, core on the floor, a devastating breach that would mean radioactive plumes released. If you wonder why these pumps weren't sent in earlier, it's because the Japanese did not ask for them. As one U.S. official told me, I think they are finally beginning to understand just how critical this is something they didn't seem to believe for far too long. Diane? Hard to believe they didn't believe for so long. But Martha, it's a question we ask every day about radiation. What can you tell us tonight about exactly how much radiation has escaped in the concentric circles around that plant? Well, we've got some really interesting statistics, Diane. If you are inside the plant, there's the equivalent of as many as 10,000 x-rays an hour. At the gate, the workers are getting as many as the equivalent of 250 x-rays an hour or one CAT scan. Just outside that Japanese evacuation area, that's about 12 miles, as high as two x-rays an hour. And just outside the U.S. evacuation zone, and that's about 50 miles, as high as one x-ray every two days. You can see why they evacuated from those areas, Diane. Martha, thank you.